Happy Monday, Floss Tube. It's been a while. It has been a long while. It's taken me a fair bit to set up here, so I hope I've remembered everything. It's so I have so much stuff in front of me. Um, I have so many things that I've wanted to talk to you about and tell you and share with you over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so it felt felt a little strange not to be uh, filming a video and, and chatting with you over the last couple of weeks. So. I don't know whether I'm coming or going today. I have been to New Jersey for the Floss Tube Retreat, which was an amazing time. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a bit. Then I drove all the way back home and I came home for a night to sort of unpack one load and repack another. And then I headed up north to the cottage uh, for just under a week. I was there from Tuesday until Sunday. I was able to spend some time with the family and came home. We came, we all came home last night. So, and then I am working for the next couple of days and then packing up again. And I'm, I'm headed back up north on Wednesday afternoon. So, uh, but I won't be there for the rest of the summer. You know, this summer has been kind of topsy turvy. And so I will not be there. I'll, I think I'm there for 10 days and, uh, I hope to do some filming and record some floss tube videos up there, share a little bit of the off the grid cottage living and off the grid crafting that happens up there. Um, but again, that's, that's in a few, in a few days. So next Monday, other than that, it's been, uh, you know, most of you know by now that uh, unfortunately we had to say goodbye to Daria last Monday and uh, was it last Monday or the, no, the, sorry, the Monday before that. I, I've completely lost track of time. If, if both in one way feels like it was just yesterday and on the other, at the same time, it feels like it was ages ago because I miss her. You know, I, I, I look for her all the time as you do and you all, those of you who have had pets know that feeling where you think you see them or you think you hear them when they're gone and uh, those memories, they stay with you. So just a quickly, a quick thank you on that note. I received a couple of thank you cards that I just wanted to quickly say thank you. The first one was from Teal and this one was given to me. It was, Teal had sent this to someone and again, this, I received it on Thursday night and uh, I can't remember Teal who you had sent it to to give it to me, but my appreciation is still the same. Uh, and thank you so much for this really lovely, thoughtful card that you had sent me for Daria. Um, the other one was from Daylene. Those of you who love and watch Daylene of So Grateful, her podcast, her Floss Tube podcast is just um, one of those ones that always never fails to cheer you up and make your day. Daylene also recently lost her senior golden retriever, Sweet Liberty. And so she uh, sent me this wonderful card that she had made with a photograph of her stitching, which I think I need this pattern. And it, and my hair was at least tidy. Jane Austen, 1880, which was, sorry. And my hair was at least tidy, which was all my ambition. Daylene and I share similar hair that is we like to call it joyful. <laughs> Some days it's more joyful than others. Uh, so it, Daylene, thank you so much. And to everyone who sent me messages of, of good wishes and thoughts, and also those of you who at the same time were going through losing a pet or saying goodbye or illness, um, you understand. And I am sorry for your loss and thank you. Thank you again. We miss her. Uh, okay, um, you know what I noticed the other day? I was wearing black capri pants and I was headed out the door. And it's just instinctive. There's a, there's a you know, lint roller by the door and I grabbed the lint roller and I went to ro roll off my black pants and I looked down and there wasn't any blonde hair on it. So, you know, it's just those little things that sort of catch you and make you catch your breath for a moment but we do miss her thank you 
Okay, um, so I'm going to, where do I start? Let's start with the giveaway. Let's do that first because this is long overdue. Because it's Monday, we do a giveaway and you can find these giveaways over on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid. The one that I put up for the Monday giveaway, the last time that I recorded a Monday Floss Tube video was this Trail Creek Farm pattern that says, you mean the world to us. There's also, there's another small pattern in here that says, I love you. It's adorable. And so this, um, I did not pull the winner before I started filming this. I'm trying to be quick. My daughter has picked up my son in order to do a delivery route for Meals on Wheels. It's lunchtime. She picked him up like 10 minutes ago. So I'm trying to get as much recording done while they are out of the house and busy so that I've got some quiet time. So um, I did not manage to pull the winner for this yet. So what I'll do is when I'm doing the editing, I'll go in and I'll use the random number generator to choose a comment for someone to win this pattern from the Facebook group. And I'm gonna insert the name of the winner right here. So congratulations. I hope you enjoy the pattern. Again, I, st I do have, uh, there was those giveaways, they're starting to stack up again. So I will try to get those out as soon as possible. So just a small giveaway this week. Uh, well, there, every Monday giveaway is a pattern, right? So, but this giveaway pattern is gonna be specifically for someone who's looking for a birth announcement for a little girl. Um, not that it has to be for a little girl clearly but the saying is one that's traditionally meant for uh, when when little girls are born sugar and spice and everything nice so this is a pattern by the sunflower seed it turns out I, w I was looking at my giveaway patterns in my drawer now let's see if I can get this to focus can I get that to focus come on there we go I have a lot of birth announcement patterns I it just so happened that way when I when I collected the box of patterns from Kathy and Neil when they were closing down. They had a lot of these left over when the shop closed down and so I took on a lot of these uh, birth announcement patterns. They're all lovely and I know that you know they all belong to a certain person out there. It's just I need to find the right person who would like to stitch this. So if you are looking for a birth announcement head on over to the Facebook group Friday Off The Grid. This is the giveaway this week and I will mail it out to you. There's an extra little something to go along with this week's giveaway, but I'll tell you more about that in just, just a few minutes. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is share with you my stitching so that just in case I, I, because I've been traveling and then up at the cottage where I have like very limited data, I am really behind and watching floss tube. And so I haven't watched anybody else's recap of the New Jersey retreat. I know that they're out there. Uh, so some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today is going to be, uh, re I'm sure that I'm going to be reiter reiterating and showing things that other people have already seen. Um, but I still, I still want to share them as well. Um, so I'm going to do that, but let me share my stitching first in case that you've already seen all of the stuff that I'm going to talk about after, and then, uh, you can carry on with your day. I know I get a bit wordy, so I am, I'm already nine minutes in and I haven't even started showing you anything. Nine and a half minutes in, and I know I've got some intro stuff from the cottage, so we're at least like ten and a half minutes in, and I haven't started. I also have some things that were gifted to me that I would love to share as well. Uh, but let's do the stitching first, and then if you're busy today, you can move on. So I have been working on two projects. That's it, two projects. So I've actually managed to see some some progress. The first one, and this was the one that I was working on at the at the retreat, and of course it's trapped here. Uh, the Northern Expressions Needleworks Shades of Wine. So, ta-da! I managed to actually. This was the only thing I stitched on the entire time I was at the retreat, and I'm absolutely thrilled with my progress. So. I'm going to insert a picture here. Let's 
that's the last time that I shared where I was and any progress that I made from that photograph has been is is now gloriously in full color detail in front of you so I finished this entire center motif here uh, and I, again I outlined this entire triangle here I did a few other little stitches here and there with you know if I had a bit of floss left on my needle instead of you know re-threading my needle I would just finish off those few stitches so I'm absolutely thrilled with how this is coming out I just love it so you know for one weekend of stitching at a retreat I think that was pretty great progress this is now going to probably get put away for a little while because I'm not taking this up north with me so I might as well pack it away before I head up. Now, since I've got this in front of you, I'm just gonna share a couple of things that are stuck here that, uh, that were gifted to me that I can share with you. So I received a couple of needle minders from Lisa Francis. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, this one here, Let It Snow, because she knows I like my snow. She had these, she had these made for me. So Let It Snow, and then over here, I think my needle is on it, but hopefully you can still see it. It is a cup of Tim Hortons coffee. Can you see it or is it too? I'm not sure you can see it. I hope you can because it's, it's just adorable. So that I always have my coffee with me. And now on the back of my bird here, because I don't know what happened to it. Let me just take my bird off so I don't lose the other magnet. Uh, Crafty Kim, Crafty Kim came around with a magnet for everyone. And I lost the I lost the backing to mine. So Crafty Kim gave everybody a really sweet wooden magnet. And so I've had mine on the back of my bird magnet so that I wouldn't so let's flip my bird around. Flip the bird around. There's a joke in there somewhere. So now you can see Crafty Kim's needle minder as well. So pretty lucky. Okay, so Shades of Wine. That was the big kahuna of progress. Uh, the other thing that I worked on was my small, and that was my Ink Circles Forest Flower. Flying a bit blind here with whether or not these are focusing. Again, I know I have, I haven't had a lot of time to figure out this silly camera, and I know I keep saying this, but it's the truth. Um, I need like I need a couple of hours dedicated to actually going in and looking carefully at this at all of the amazing things that this camera can do. It's a wonderful camera, and I'm thrilled with it. But at the moment, I'm only just kind of touching the surface of how I can use it. So it's a shame. However, I need more time. So here's my progress for forest flower. So there you go. Look at that. I managed to get entirely to the top of the chart. So here's the top and then this is all completely finished, what's in here. The other things that I worked on that were, you know, you'd never know if I didn't point them out. All four of those little brown flowers there had to be uh, filled in and one of them actually had to be completely ripped out and fixed, which I did. Um, there's a lot of other little detail work within the uh, around the outside border of this inner mandala that I completed as well. So it's tiny. I'm doing, oh, and I didn't tell you the details about the other one. Because I've talked about it so often, I forget that lots of you maybe haven't seen it before. The Northern Expressions piece, I'm stitching that on a 40 count white linen. And it is, I'm using two of the called for dinky dye silk, which are the two, the medium and the light color. And then the darkest color is a gentle arts sampler threads again I've done I've worked on that in a couple of stitch with me videos and I know I give better information on exactly the names of the, the threads in those videos the ink circles design I'm stitching this with the called for threads they are all they're all gentle arts I don't have the list in front of me the pattern and the threads are in the other room and I'm stitch but they are all of the called for threads and I'm stitching this on a 25 count even weave one strand of floss over one 
So it's either 25 or 28 not exactly sure it's a bit of a mystery to me and I did not get my ruler out to count it to double check however I love it and I already have finishing plans for it I know I say that a lot and then I have my my stack grows and then like five years pass and then I will fully finish it that's okay it's all good all right so that's all I worked on I mean I did some knitting I'm a bit mad at my knitting at the moment so Sarah's Afghan I it's like I lost my brain and I forgot how to cable and I did two of the like there's a lot of cabling in this blanket two of the rows I did entirely wrong it's like I flipped it and I cabled the the stitch to the front instead of cabling it to the back all the way across the row and I didn't just do it once I did it twice so by the time I realized what I'd done I have I had to rid, rip out five rows of knitting so kids just came home and it was uh, noisy for a few minutes so I was just in the middle of talking about Sarah's Afghan uh, I have to rip out and correct five rows they are very long rows so I was a little irritated at that so my knitting I am almost finished one of the socks that I was working on so I'm pleased about that but that Afghan is stuck in the timeout corner for now I'll get back to it when I get back to it Okay, so that's it for my stitching progress. And if that's all you were here for, then I'll say goodbye and I'll, I'll see you next time. Uh, if you'd like to stick around and see everything else that I have to share with you today, let's dig in. So I have everything in front of me. I hope I've remembered everything. I hope I've remembered everybody's name. And uh, I will try to put in links of Instagram names or Flosstube channels if I can. And if I've forgotten anything, um, or if you have questions about anything, just ask me in the comments below. So the, the retreat this year, put on by Arlene Cohen, uh, works by ABC. She did a phenomenal job. There were 109 people there. There were a few people who didn't manage to make it. One lady actually also had to leave uh, the, the Friday night. So we, it was a, for me, it was a huge retreat. I've never been to a retreat with that many people. And I can tell, but I can tell you, I've organized larger events, um, you know, recitals and, and that kind of thing. Uh, that's a lot of work. That is, that is a lot of work. And I know the amount of work and time and effort that Miss Patty goes into for the small retreat that we have up here and she she works her tail off and so to do that for over a hundred people Arlene deserves uh, deserved all of our thanks and more that uh, I hope she felt appreciated when uh, when we thanked her at the weekend so she had a team of helpers her local stitching group in New Jersey uh, they helped her out with these grab bags putting them together and in some cases making the things that went into them and it was a phenomenal uh, treat to receive a phenomenal gift of, of things a treasure trove of things to receive when we when we got there so everything came in this large uh, project bag that's a really nice you know memento of the fact that you were at the retreat in 2019. So the New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat 2019, this lovely project bag. Um, and then inside the project bag, so I've, I've kind of left things tucked up into how they were packaged so that I could show you them, sort of how we received them. There was a, pa a paper package of, of things for us. One of them was uh, an attendee list, which was great because it lists everybody's Instagram name and their Flosstube channel if they have one. So that was, you know, throughout the weekend, if you met someone, you could kind of look up, you know, their Instagram name. And I, I, I haven't had a chance to go through this properly and go in and uh, follow everybody who's in here because it's a lot, but it was, uh, it was wonderful. And then there was a pattern for the, specifically for this retreat. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to share this, so I won't flash it up on the screen, but you can see Arlene's 
finished copy there. So there was a pattern for that chart. And then there was a, a list of events and what was in the bags that we received, information about what was gonna be what was gonna be happening. So when I arrived, I arrived on well, I stayed with Ginger Gerald. He lives in New Jersey and we decided to save a little bit of money that we would uh I, I couch surfed at his place and we drove in and back. Um the days of the retreat so we didn't get a hotel room um i just it just i cheaped out and he let me sleep on his couch and we drove in so if if we're if i'm gonna go back next year might uh might consider splurging on a hotel room only because it was it was a bit of a drive and you know you didn't want to feel like you were missing out on anything and it was a really fun time so we arrived on the Friday morning. Was it the Friday morning or was it the Thursday night? No, it was definitely the Friday morning. First thing. I'm, I'm having trouble remembering because this now so many things have happened since then. So to the best of my knowledge, it was Friday morning. And uh, once I got settled and, you know, uh, put my stuff where I was going to sit, then I, I tried to use the momentum of, I was already in the mode of, you know, talking to people and, and saying hi. So I thought, okay, now's your chance, be brave and go around to the tables and introduce yourself. So I did, and I was slightly terrified, but I, Arlene had provided name tags and I, I don't know where my name tag is, it's gone, but everybody had a name tag on a sort of lanyard that you could wear around your neck and uh i went around to i thought it, i thought i'd gone around to all of the tables but i think i might have missed some of the a couple of the tables on the inside but i tried to go around to each table and i tried to you know hold up my tag and introduce myself and you know look at everybody's the stitching the stitching that i mind boggling mind boggling that in itself going to retreat and wandering around and looking at what people are working on and seeing the talent that is out there for for people who are just like you they're just like you and they love to stitch and what they're working on is amazing i mean you could really literally spend the whole weekend doing that so I put on my brave pants and I walked around and I, I tried to introduce myself to everybody who was there at the time. I know a couple of, you know, clearly not everybody is going to be in their seats every hour of every day of a retreat. So I know I, I probably missed meeting a few people, but I tried to introduce myself to everybody who was sitting there. And, uh, th then I, 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 I I felt like I'd been brave and I was pretty proud of myself for doing that. So, um, that was fun. So then, you know, we, we kind of went through the goodie bags after that. And so let me share with you what was in the goodie bags. So again, the, the package with all the names, then there was this thing from there. Some of the stuff in the bag was donated from different companies and some of the things in the gift bag were handmade and gifted to us from members of Arlene's uh, stitching group. This one was uh, gifted to us from Krynek. It's called a bag o bits from Krynek. Now I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I honestly, I don't tend to use a lot of metallic thread, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this. but. You know, it's like one of those things that you tuck away somewhere safe and then when you have a use for it, you're usually glad you have it because it's one of those odd things where you might just want to add a tiny little embellishment to something where you don't have a bead or something like that. And so I have a funny feeling that one day I'll be glad that that's in my drawer. But at the moment, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it, but that's okay. Uh, okay, and then there were two other sort of baggies of stuff. I'll talk about this one, this one first. So there was a little zipper pouch and it had some goodies in it. So let me share. We got a highlighter 
and not just any highlighter it's apparently an erasable highlighter which i'd never heard of which is kind of cool uh there was a tape measure with uh what was this on it again i was wearing contacts remember i said i was gonna wear contacts i was wearing them and i couldn't see anything because my eyes have changed and i'm not putting reading glasses on with contacts because that's just ridiculous so I'm wearing my glasses. So this is a, it's a Floss Troop Retreat, August 2019. And it's from Favors with Flair. Favorswithflare.com. So a little tape measure. We got a needle minder. It's one of those uh, wood engraved needle minders. So the Floss Troop Retreat logo's on it. We got a skein of Weeks Dye Works. I think this was donated by Weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But it's that, it's the Driftwood colorway. One of my favorites. It's just beautiful. And then um, donated by Gary Parr, host of Fiber Talk. Wonderful Fiber Talk. He gifted us with um, some couple of I think everybody had different stuff, but it's the Rainbow Gallery line. And so the two skeins that I got, card, skeins, cards, what would you call these? The, f the first one, I'll show you. So this is a sort of ecru Fiesta Six Ply Rayon Floss. Beautiful color, just a beautiful, it's almost like a pale pink ecru with like a cream it's hard to describe but it's lovely and then my one of my favorite colors like a lilac but this is a different this is not rayon this is uh strandable 12 ply silk so that's some lovely silk right there you could do an entire uh small with that 12 strands so that would go a long way beautiful rainbow gallery stuff is really really nice so Gary, thank you. That was really kind of you to donate those, those little gifts to everybody at the retreat. That was really kind. Okay, uh, I forgot to mention the travel mug. Everybody got a Floss Tube New Jersey travel mug. And who doesn't need a travel mug? Most of the people there were using them. Okay, now this next one. These were all handmade. These pouches. These pouches were handmade by, I believe her name is Barbara and she is um, a member of Arlene's Stitching Group and she made them all. She made these pouches for everybody. Um, so the grab bags had them all in them and they have a really cool opening. I can't quite figure out what it is that she's used in the top there, but she's inserted something in the top. Some kind of, you can hear it, hear that? It's like a firm, almost like the, what it feels like, you know, mini blinds? It feels like a little mini blind in there, a really flexible little mini blind. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's cool. And so it makes it so that the top of the pouch is, you know, it's not gonna pop open too easily on you. So she made these pouches. Now inside these pouches, these were the goodies that were all handmade by Arlene's group and they, they are phenomenal. Okay, so starting with, there were handmade notebooks and not just any notebooks like these are these are paper crafted notebooks where you know they took the time to stamp designs throughout and put little interesting things cardstock and you know it's just it's beautiful and this took someone you know, a substantial amount of time to put these together. So just blown away by everything that we received. So a little notebook and some crinkle, crinkle, crinkle counting pins. These are lovely, beautiful handmade counting pins done, you know, beautifully presented even, you know, on Felt with some cardstock in a little baggie, and then there was a scissor fob, 
with uh, New Jersey Retreat 2019, little pair of scissors on the end. There was some floss tags, floss tags with, now I've seen other people talking about these. I know Diana It's Kismet was talking about these and then Letitia bought some. They're, I think you can buy them on Amazon and I can't remember what they're called, but they're flexible and they don't have that, um, well, they, they do have the connector on them, but they're flexible and uh, they're pretty cool. So one of those with some floss tags and then there was a beeswax thread conditioner. It's adorable and it smells, this is, beeswax is one of my favorite scents. And so to get a little something like that in your, in your gift bag, just felt like such a nice treat. So that was, that was our, I, pretty amazing, right? So thank you again so much to Arlene and all of the people who helped put that together because that was, that was such a wonderful gift. Now, uh, Ginger Gerald decided that his notions pouch was not for him. And so he gave it to me and he said, you can use this um, to give away because he, I, I'm going to keep mine, um, but purple isn't really his color. So I'm going to add this. I have an extra notions pouch from the 2019 Floss Tube New Jersey Retreat that belonged to Ginger Gerald. And I am going to send that out with whoever wins the sugar and spice pattern for the Because Monday draw. So those two things I'm going to send out together. So, so there you go. Okay. Now moving on, uh, I had mentioned the needle minders that Lisa Francis had um, given me. She also gave me a little bag of remnants, beautiful fabric remnants, small counts. I think she's hoping for a revival of Flossmas in December and perhaps these might be suitable for Flossmas ornaments. We shall see. Uh, the other thing that I received uh, uh, from Betsy, Betsy, and I can't show you, I can't show you the pattern because I'm not sure. Let me just, just give me a moment here. Betsy gave me a, a pattern book. It's a magazine, the cross stitcher. And this is from, when is this from? This is what the cover looks like. <sighs> when is it from? It doesn't say. And you know, I can't even show you the pattern because I'm not sure that there is actually a stitched version of the pattern. But there's a design in here of the Canadian Parliament Building in Ottawa. And she, she thought that I would like it, and she's right. And you know what? There isn't actually a photograph. I'm just having a quick check here because I just want to double check I'm not fibbing. Nope, there's no actual photograph. However, Betsy, thank you. I actually plan on stitching it because the Parliament Building is a lovely, lovely building and we don't have enough Canadian cross stitch around. So I plan on stitching that. Thank you so much. Speaking of Canadians, I met a new one at the, I had to go all the way to New Jersey to meet a new Canadian friend who's from Barrie, which is, uh, I, I go very, I'm, I pass right outside Barrie on my way through. If I take the highway, I go right through Barrie, uh, Cavell. So Cavell, it was really nice to meet you. Uh, you have some information on a fiber festival, I believe that you're going to share with me. So don't forget to email me that because, um, uh, always looking for more information to drive different places and see new things. The other thing I picked up, I picked up one thing from the freebie table and I love it. And it's tiny. It's tiny. It's called the little book of berries from the berry patch. That's it. That's what I picked up at the freebie table. Cause heaven knows I don't need anything, but it's from 1977. And I can't imagine there's a problem with me sharing these, but just because you're never going to mean good luck. Look at those. Look at those little charts. They're lovely. 
and I just I can picture in my mind you know stitching them on a little piece of linen and turning it into something beautiful so there's all different kinds of berries in here pick a berry it's in here and then there are suggested DMC colors in the back so I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in looking at that further okay then we were gifted a couple of things from people who just went around and had something for everybody uh regina starkey and megan laster mother and daughter hi regina hi megan um so regina is crafty epa on ig on instagram excuse me and megan is megan.laster.stitches on instagram and floss tube as well and i know megan was one that i managed to get into uh and subscribe to her channel before I left only because we were chatting and while I was thinking about it I went in and, and hunted her down and and I tracked her down and subscribed they took around those now what the heck are these things called they have some you know those little things that you can snap onto your fabric you know um, Stephanie and Pam were talking about them and then a whole bunch of other people started using them. You know, you snap them onto your Q-snaps to hold the fabric on, but what are they called? I can't remember, you can buy them from Amazon. But they're, so they handed these out, they handed four of these around for everyone. So I thought that was, that was so kind. Megan, Megan won one of my bag sets from the raffle so she was she was quite pleased and so we had a good chat and her mother regina made the most amazing quilt for the raffle like her her sewing skills and her quilting skills i mean it's it was just it was such a generous donation and mckenna i think mckenna put most of her tickets into that bag so that she would win the quilt and she was lucky enough to win that beautiful beautiful quilt so regina that was a really kind and generous donation so well done well done so they handed out those and then leah uh, who is at red curls on instagram leah handed out she handed out two different things so she went around on one day and she handed everybody you got to choose a stitchy friend to um, either keep on your, your table with you or put it on your stitching frame. So that's the little guy that I chose and they have little flexible arms and legs. And then she went around the next day and she handed out clover clips. Now, I use these exclusively in sewing. I don't, I don't use pins when I put the bags together. I always just use these clover clips. They're, they're invaluable. I love them and so adding my the ones that I have are red and purple so I'm gonna add these four little yellow guys in and now I'll have fond memories of Lee uh, when I am doing my sewing Lee was hilarious she is the one who brought an enormous life-sized cardboard cutout of Jamie Fraser uh, Sam Hewen from Outlander and it was pretty funny pretty funny so Thank you, Leah. That's very kind. Now, is it Leah or Lee? Correct me if I'm wrong, please. All right. Then I was lucky enough. I it was this was funny. I managed to. I was sitting beside Letitia. Letitia and I haven't seen each other since a year ago when we managed to get together at Ginger Gerald's last July, and uh, Letitia was deftly finishing her. Uh, small for the smalls exchange a beautiful biscornu that she was working on and I was admiring her floss and so she handed me a twist of silk that was the silk that she was using and I admired it and I handed it back to her and she said no no that's for you <laughs> And you could have just dropped me to the floor because I was so shocked. I was just admiring it and because it's all of my favorite colors. It's absolutely beautiful. So this is a, a, um, a, from Silks For You and Letitia, I can't remember the number that you, you have talked about this before. So if you watch this, if you could just pop the number in the, the it, it, it has teals and purples and just a mustardy orange and a yellow and a sunshine yellow and it is just the most beautiful hank of silk i don't even know if you can see camera cut me off i guess i was talking too long i think i have a shut off at half an hour 
I'm gonna have to figure out how to switch that off too. Okay, so this was from Letitia and I love it. It is absolutely beautiful. So thank you, Letitia. Okay, and then we were, each of us were given, and I actually still have my orts stuck inside here. Kelly Bell, and you can hear, she put tiny little bells on them. That's so adorable. She made, she handmade and sewed these ort catchers for everyone at the retreat. It was extremely kind and thoughtful. So thank you, Kelly. And then we had a stick pin, like a counting pin or a, uh, you know, a, a decorative, beautiful pin that you would put in a finish to a finished pin cushion to show it off. These were from, these were handmade by Barbara Thompson. And this was the one that I chose and it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful you know shades of, of goldy brown and amber and it's just it's a beautiful stone that's on top of there it's lovely okay so that takes that that those were the things that I was um, okay yeah I, I still have so much more so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab a glass of water and take I'm gonna um, pause the video I'm gonna pop in a little ad from YouTube here and then I'll be back in a minute to share the rest with you. Okay, I'm back. Reusable, recyclable, these metal straws. I'm a fan. I, they come with their, I, I think we bought them on Amazon, these metal straws. And you can get ones that are bent and ones that are straight. They come with their own uh, cleaning, you know, like a bottle brush. They come with their own, because that's always kind of grossed me out thinking of reusable straws was how was I going to clean them properly but these ones from Amazon actually came with their own little cleaning brush so I feel like they actually get cleaned properly okay thank you for sticking it out with me today I, I had so much to share and so much to talk about and I've been kind of you know storing it all up and, and then I would think oh I want to tell them this and oh I want to tell them that and then you know time would pass and it's all just kind of piled up so I apologize in advance for the length of this video I know it's probably going to be a little bit lengthy however lots of good stuff to share okay couple other things that were gifted to me to to share um, the first one was from Diana it's Kismet Stitches Diana made me a project bag and it is beautiful I mean it is beautiful look see that coffee cups I think she knows me I think she knows I love I'm a coffee lover and so what I'm gonna do is I actually have two patterns in here already because I purchased two patterns from Arlene at the uh, retreat so I'm gonna flip it around so you can see so Diana made me a vinyl front project bag and it is it's so beautiful and it was such a surprise to to receive it that it was kind of just sitting there on my on my spot and no one had said anything and I said who you know whose is this and why is this here and, and they said oh it's for you it was from Diana so um, thank you Diana it's beautiful and your sewing is impeccable uh, look at the fabric she used on the inside. Isn't that sweet? It's beautiful. It's perfect. I love it. I love it. Okay, so let me show you the patterns that I bought. And then I'm going to tuck them back in their home. So these are similar patterns, but I love them. I, I have my taste. You, I think some of you, most of you know, I love geometric designs. I also love blue, lavender, purple, uh, maroon. And so these designs really spoke to me. So the first one is Nonette number one. And I believe this is Arlene's one of her newest designs. So she had um, begun the stitching on this and it was on the trunk show table where it could be admired. And it is just stunning. You can use those, you could use any one of those little motifs to stitch 
whatever you wanted. A scissor fob, you could do it teeny, teeny, tiny, make a scissor fob. You could make a pin cushion. You could, you know, the, it's, the options are endless. You could stitch the whole thing as one and, and frame it. And then along the same vein, I bought this pattern from her that she put out last year, which is called Six Pages from 1603. So let me just read you the back of this while you admire the pattern here. The designs in the centers of the squares come from a pattern book published in 1603 in France titled Les Secondes Ouvres et Subtiles Inventions de Lingerie de Seigneur Frédéric de Vicolo Venetienne. <laughs> How's that? Did I butcher that enough? Holy toodle. It is a 64 page book of designs that captured my attention. So just, I, I love the information that she puts on the back here. She also gives a really great description of stitch count for the entire design, but also stitch count for one of the designs. And so you can, you can, uh, it's like a choose your own adventure with these patterns. I think they're fabulous and I can't wait to start them. Love them. Thank you. So I, again, I purchased those. I purchased those from Arlene. Uh, so again, Diana, thank you for the bag. Now, I spoke with Karen, Karen B. I don't know if you want your last name on the podcast, so I'm just going to call you Karen B. We had spoken back when I initially said that I was coming to the retreat and I was a little bit nervous about meeting people. And Karen was one of the friendly voices that sent me an email and said, Hey, I'm going to be there and looking forward to meeting you. And Oh, by the way, um, you know, I also watch the fiber friends and my daughter is a yarn dyer and I'm going to send you some yarn. So Karen did one better. She actually brought yarn to the retreat and not just any yarn because, uh, there were a few other packages of yarn that she brought for a couple of other people that were in the room. She had her daughter, she gave them, she, she asked her daughter for specific colors, I believe for each person and she nailed it. I mean, this yarn is amazing. So she, she gave me a beautiful little card with a personal note and then the yarn. Wait till you see this. Right? Does she know me or what? So I am really hoping that the color on this is coming through properly because if you know me, you know that I love maroons and pinks and plums and purples and reds and just that kind of, that kind of red, you know, like a blue red, but this is all of my favorite colors in a blend and it's, she named it bee balm. Okay, so bee balm. Can you see that? Let's see if we can get that to focus. It's important that this focuses today. Come on camera, you can do it. Okay, now her daughter's name is Catherine Frank and her shop is called Catherine Frank Fiber Arts. Now she has a website on here, www.catherinefrank.com. Uh, Karen, I tried to look up her website and I couldn't get it to come up and I double checked my spelling, but maybe again, it was user error. However, I did find Catherine Frank on Etsy. And so I'm going to link to her Etsy shop below this yarn that Karen gifted me. So Catherine's mom, it's an 80 wash, superwash Merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. This yarn is stunning. It's stunning. It is perfectly colored for me. It is the so it's soft, it is squishy, it is going to make the most beautiful project. I have a pattern in mind. Um, the pattern that I had in mind, I'm not sure. I have a couple of patterns in mind. It's, I wanna show the yarn to its best advantage. So she called it Bee Balm. It's on her flutter base and it's 400 yards. Each skein, it's 400 yards. So I have 800 delicious yards to turn into something beautiful. Blown away, truly. So Karen and your daughter, Catherine, thank you so much. I am not going to be opening this or touching this until I share this on the Fiber Friends podcast. 
so that I show it to its best advantage. So looking forward to recording with my girlfriends soon so that I can kick that up. Okay. So purchases. I purchased a couple of things while I was away. Not a lot. Um, I'm trying to keep a lid on the finances, you know, trying to be fiscally responsible. So I only bought a couple of things. However, what I did bought, I'm rather thrilled with. So let me, uh, let me share. I bought some fabric. We went to, uh, I'm, I need to get the name right. Needleworkers Delight. Needleworkers Delight. The owners of Needleworkers Delight are the dyers behind Silk Weaver Fabrics. And they also had provided a package when I was talking about the grab bag. I knew I was gonna be talking about them later with my purchases, so I saved this. Needleworkers Delight also donated a little gift package to go into the retreat bags. And inside, they had, a, they are Zweigart distributors. And so they have a pattern booklet, a freebie from Zweigart. They also, gave us a coupon for 15% off of our purchases the entire weekend that we were there. And I know there were a few people who made multiple trips to Needleworkers Delight. And they also gave us inside each package a sample of some of the different Zweigart fabrics in different counts and different uh, textures. There's some, what was this? This is called Devosa, which is an 18 count even weave. There is a 28 count cashel linen in this beautiful teal green. This is definitely gonna be a Flossmas ornament, as is this. So this is Belfast linen, 32 count in deep magenta. Beautiful. And then uh, 36 count Eden, uh, Edinburgh linen in silvery moon. It's very, very, silvery moon is a perfect description for it. It's absolutely gorgeous beautiful so that was a wonderful little freebie uh, gift package in the in the the grab bag for us so much appreciated so what I purchased from Needleworkers Delight was I was I was wanting a souvenir of the retreat so I decided that fabric was going to be the way that I went because I was there for you know I wanted to look at the silk weaver fabric and, and bring home something that was specific to uh, the shop where I was at. So I chose two pieces of linen. The first one, and I haven't taken it out of the bag, it's still sealed up. So this is a 46 count Bergen linen in the colorway Almond. And this is a silk weaver fabric. So I haven't taken it out of the bag, so I hope you can see. It's very subtle. It's it's traditional, my favorite style of, of you know, neutral um, and 46 count. And it's a 12 by 17 piece. So it's a, it's a excuse me, a substantial piece that, uh, that I'm excited to dig into. The other piece that I chose was another Silk Weaver fabric. This is a Newcastle linen, so it's 40 count. And the colorway is deep khaki. And I love it. I believe this is a fat quarter. Um, I didn't open it up because, well, I haven't taken it out of my bag since an hour ago to share with you. I'm really thrilled with these two. I think that they're wonderful souvenirs of my weekend and those combined with Arlene's pattern. You know, could you just see stitching this on this? I can. I think it's going to be phenomenal. So that would be a true souvenir of a great weekend. Okay, so that uh, that takes care of fabric. The other couple of things that I purchased were some needle minders. I purchased a needle minder from Abby Top Knot Stitcher. So this is her logo on her card. Abigail John. There's the back of her card. Hopefully that's focusing. See, I'm dealing with poor eyesight and, you know, not knowing if this is focusing. I am a work in progress, my friends, that is for sure. Uh, and the, the needle miner that I purchased was this one. So, three broomsticks. I love it. Love it. 
And then I purchased some needle minders from table mate, Amy Baruch, the fabulous Amy. I really loved getting to know you better, Amy. I'm so glad we met. I'm just, I'm thrilled that we had a chance to connect this that weekend and become friends. Amy has a beautiful Etsy, uh, Etsy shop and Instagram page. So her needle minder, look at these. So there were six of them that I chose. Her shop is amybaru.etsy.com. And I hope you can see those needle minders because they're just beautiful. And then the backs of them have little buttons on them. And there you can see her logo at the top there. Let me show her card again. Just so fun. So fun. I think I had my fingers over her information. Let's try that again. Boy, this is, this is um, amateur hour on floss tube. It's all good though, right? I will link to both Abby Topknot. Abby had some beautiful, uh, Ginger Gerald bought a, it was a, like a stone. It was a little amber stone needle minder and it was beautiful. It was so simple and so lovely. And, uh, and he, so he immediately put that on one of his projects and maybe I can convince him to share a photograph on Instagram or something. By the way, for those of you who have messaged me about Gerald, I know he hasn't put out a video in quite a while. He is fine. Uh, Gerald is totally fine. He's healthy. He's not under the weather or anything like that. He's just, at the moment, he's completely swamped with both work and finishing up some schoolwork. So he has no immediate plans to do a video, though he's probably going to make a liar out of me and, I don't know, quickly put out a video before I even get this thing edited. He's like that. He does things super speedy and then just, uh, you know, you don't know, he, he's stealthy and he'll get, he'll get a video up there. But anyways, he's fine. He is fine. And like you, I wish he'd, uh, he'd put out a video soon, but I know he's busy. Okay. So that, oh, oh my goodness. This little thing was hiding and I cannot forget to tell you about this because this was, this was quite something. Okay. So the night that I was going around to the, so Friday wasn't a night, felt like night. You know when you're inside somewhere and there's no natural light and you feel like it's night, but it's not. I think it was in the morning when I went around to the tables. I met Candace and Candace, I was admiring her stitching because it was beautiful. And she, all of a sudden she pulled up this tin that she had and she opened it up and it was full of little smalls, these in particular. Okay. Can you see it? That little spool that's on there. Now look at the back. She's got N New Jersey. So NJ 2019. She stitched and finished these little scissor fobs for every single person at the retreat. And they're perfect. They're perfect. They're perfectly finished little tiny pillows that are amazing. And just so beautiful and thoughtful and I love it. I love it. And it was just, it was just hiding underneath those clover things. So I'm, I'm so glad. Now let me just do a quick double check because a lot of the things were, were, you know, tiny and perfect. And I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. I don't think I have, I think I've showed everything. Okay. The treat was, the retreat was amazing. The tables where everyone was showing off their finishes. I mean, they, they were, they surrounded the room. There was so much stitching to look at the smalls exchange. I did not participate in the smalls exchange for a couple of different reasons. I made notion pouches for everyone at the retreat. And so I used my time to do that. I'm also a little, um, what's the word? I people that do these smalls exchange they're, they're their, their finishes are so nice that I always feel a little bit like I could never do something that nice. Does that make sense? Like, I'm sure I could, but there's that little part of you that thinks, Ooh, these things are so amazing. I could never make something that looks this amazing because when you see the table afterwards, everyone got their smalls and then they all took them back up to the table and displayed them. They were stunning. Like, the entire table, 
every single small that had been put out there was phenomenal. Like, phenomenal. Incredible. So, I may consider, if I, if I go to another retreat, I may consider participating in the Smalls Exchange, but I'll have to, I'll have to really get my courage up to do that because, boy, <laughs> those finishes were truly stunning. It was a wonderful time. The food was great. You know, we were right there. So there were restaurants there to, available to eat, hang out with, uh, with other stitchers and chat. And I met so many, so many amazing stitchers and kind, kind people. It was uh, definitely something I would do again. And I'm really glad that I stepped out of my little shell, my little, my little shell here where I work at home and I, I, you know, talk to you through a camera. <laughs> we have, cause I love to talk. So, but you know, this is, this is very different for me because I feel like I'm having a conversation with you, but it feels like a conversation with one person, not a room full of, of a hundred people. And so that was, that was tough, but it was, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did. It was really, fun, really fun. So thank you again to Arlene and everyone who helped you put that together. It was phenomenal. Uh, I, you know what, the other thing that I meant to do was, was purchase a pattern from Michelle Bendy. She had some patterns there and I, I spoke with her about doing it and then the weekend happened and I left and as soon as I left, as soon as I was on the highway back home, I thought I didn't get a pattern from Michelle. So I need to, I, I'm going to purchase one from her and have her mail it to me. So not quite the same, but it'll have to do. I have just a couple other things to share with you and then um, I will, uh, well, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay, I had a couple other things come in the mail that I wanted to share with you. The first one was from Carrie in Australia, the creative curator. So creative curator on Instagram, she has opened a brand new Etsy shop and here's her logo. Now what's in this little pouch? I am saving this. It had, there were two things in here. One for me and one for you. I am saving this for the next Sunday high tea. So that's the next time you're gonna see this little pouch because well, you'll see in a minute, it's pretty special. Okay, so when Carrie opened up her Etsy shop, she started making sort of, uh, what would you call them? They're not like chain mail, but uh, jump ring art. I mean, it's art. And they're scissor fobs that she's been making. And I spied a couple that I really liked. And I said, you know, those are the two that I want. And I'll take those two, please. And she sent them to me. Now, it ended up that I liked them so much that I messaged her back. And I said, you know, I really think we should do a collaboration together. I really think that those scissor fobs would be perfect for a summer kit that I'm putting together. So um, Carrie then very generously gifted me with these. And she also said, I'm sending you an extra one to give away to uh, a lucky winner. So are you ready? So this is the first one. Now I really hope you can see this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a photograph of these so that I can show them up close and personal. And here's my other one, and it has a snail on it. And there, these are captured beads. There are beads on the inside of each one of those. And this one, there's a bead on the outside. There are two beads on the outside of each uh, jump ring here. She has made all of these individually by hand. So these two are for me. This one is for you. So, Sunday high tea, next Sunday high tea, that's gonna be part of the giveaway. So exciting. Okay, and uh, like I said, a scissor fob is part of the summer kit. I'm gonna be putting out a video for Evertote tomorrow. There is no shop update today because I'm saving it all for one video tomorrow. So more on that tomorrow. She's, uh, Carrie also sent this, uh, I mean, she just, Look at that, love that, that card, beautiful. One day I will get to Australia 
The other thing I received in the mail, uh, you've heard me mention Ellen before. Ellen, who is a huge fan of Pam and Steph, just keep stitching. She's their number one fan. Well, uh, she just so happens to be a legitimate rock star. She is a member of the Crash Test Dummies, which is a very well-known Canadian band. They are currently on tour with their 25th anniversary of God Shuffled His Feet album, which they are celebrating, and they are they are rocking out all over the place. So, um, Ellen is a cross stitcher. And now, not only is Ellen a rock star cross stitcher, she's also a brand new floss tuber. So she has a brand new floss tube channel, Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. I'm gonna link to her video below because she's a ton of fun. And uh, I look forward to meeting her in person. And it's gonna happen soon, but she's far too busy being cool on tour to meet up anytime soon. So we had to make do with sending each other care packages. Now, she had received some linen for a design that she wanted to stitch. She wasn't a fan of the linen that uh, that she was sent. It was, it, you know how sometimes things don't look in reality like you think they're gonna look in your head? She wasn't a fan. So um, I had some linen that I thought would be more to her taste that was a little more on the lighter end of the spectrum. And so I offered to trade with her because the fabric she got I really liked so we did a little swap and so she sent me the fabric it arrived in the mail um, well it arrived while I was away so I only just opened it up yesterday so this is a 40 count Newcastle linen in the colorway ale and it is beautiful so Ellen I'm really glad you didn't like this because I love it it's beautiful beautiful it's a 12 by 17 piece now the other thing that she sent me, I mean, this girl knows how to send a swap. She sent, a, this was the card she wrote on, which is a photograph uh, taken from needlework done, needlework that is on display at the Victoria and Albert Museum. This was a hanging that was worked on by Mary Queen of Scots and Elizabeth Talbot, the Countess of Shrewsbury. I mean, come on. So I have a personalized little note from Ellen famous, famous Ellen, who's now going to be a famous floss tuber. And not only did she send me this perfect card and this beautiful linen that fortunately she didn't like, she sent me her C her solo CD. Look at that. Look at that rock star face. She's amazing. So now that we're best friends, Ellen, can't wait to meet you in real life. Now I didn't send hers with a CD. I have a CD too, you know, Ellen, I do but it's only 20 minutes long. And we did our CD to hand out to brides and grooms who were choosing music for their wedding. So it's it's not nearly as cool as this. This is really, this is very cool. So, uh, Ellen, thank you. I'm sorry that I did not have something nearly so cool to send to you. I think that's it. I'm looking around and it's like a bomb went off in here. I, I, think, I think I've remembered everything if I haven't, I'll share it with you next Monday. I will not be recording a Friday Stitch With Me video this week. I just, I, I don't know when I would do it looking ahead to what's going on this week. So uh, there's a few family things that are happening later in the week. And I'm really kind of bummed about that. I miss doing the Friday Stitch With Me videos. I feel like, um, you know, I look forward to it. I look forward to doing them. I look forward to the conversation that happens from them and I, I miss it. So I will definitely be doing one next week and next Friday's Stitch With Me video will be filmed up at the cottage. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I thought I might try to put out a few extra videos next week from the cottage because kind of condense everything uh, a whole summer's worth of fun, condense it into a few videos, maybe share a few extra things that are special to us that we, that we do or that, you know, lots of, lots of people haven't watched the cottage videos from the last couple of summers and hopefully there'll be still some, some new things there to enjoy as well if, uh, if you enjoy those videos from Off the Grid, Off the Grid headquarters. Um, Spoiler alert, we do have another bear on the island this year. 
but uh, no mother bear with cubs this year. So we're, you know, fingers crossed. It's one bear, it's a junior sort of adolescent male. He's very timid, very timid. My son has seen him a couple of times now. Uh, and as soon as the bear saw my son, my son didn't even really have to make a lot of noise. The bear just took off. So he's very young, very timid, which is what we like. We like, we like our bears like that. So, but only the one bears are very territorial and our island is 70. It's not, it's not our island, the entire thing. To be clear, we have a small plot. Okay. And my father-in-law has a, has a property and the whole island is 75 acres. A large percentage of that is crown land. Crown land means that it's owned by the Canadian government. Uh, and so it is uh, that no one will build on that land unless the government decides to sell it off, which, you know, mm -mm. The, in, you never can tell what's gonna happen in the future, but uh, you know, we're pretty confident that it's going to remain the way it is. So, uh, we have just the one bear. They're fairly fairly territorial and they require a lot of space in order to provide enough food for them to uh, to survive. So so that's good. Um, haven't seen the beaver around yet this year, but again, I was only there for five days. So uh, normally the, the beaver dam that's across from us is quite active. We know that it's quite active. We heard the kits in there. The kits are beaver babies. That's what they're called. Um, if you go up close to the dam, you could hear them last year. You could hear them inside the dam. So that's uh, kind of cute. My father-in-law is not a fan of the beavers. They can be quite destructive. They, the, the phrase busy as a beaver, there's a reason for that phrase. They, they work all day long. They, they are industrious and, uh, they, they sometimes can go after the dock and the stuff that's underneath the dock. And yeah, that's, that's not good. So he doesn't like the beaver very much, but anyways, neither here nor there. I haven't seen the beaver yet. Hopefully I will. So that's it for me. I really hope this video wasn't like three hours long. I don't think it was, but when I get talking, I lose complete track of time. So I have no idea how long this is going to be by the time I've uploaded it, of course, you'll see the timestamp and you'll know, but uh, I will, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. I have a shop update. I'm releasing the kit, the late summer kit. And uh, I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. That's it for me today. Happy stitching. It was great visiting with you again today. And I look forward to seeing you at the cottage next week. Take care.